if we had to pay attention to everything that was going on, if you constantly felt the clothing on your body, the temperature in the air, the uh, every piece of data around you, the book titles on your bookshelves, everything all at once, you'd go crazy, or you would need so much food that we would have gone extinct because we would just need that much energy to run our brains. I wish I could hug you. This oh is like, <laughs> oh I feel God. like you're so far away. I know, but we're hugging, we're hugging. And I'm literally, I've been talking about you for the past 10 minutes because I didn't want to burn our time on doing your intro. So I have been talking oh about my you, God. how amazing you are. And I literally said that you, everything that you teach here in your incredible book, everything that you are in real life and virtual you create a space for us when we were able to do in-person events and you create a space for us virtually on Zoom where I feel like I'm getting a hug. You know, like we're in these dinners and we're in our rooms and we're connecting and I feel the energy of the other people with me in that room and they feel mine. And this is all this is all about what you teach. This is this is about that human connection, and it's about influencing in that way where you create the authentic community where we can feel each other, even um, virtually. So, so I really love you, and I'm, I'm giving you a big hug. And and so, thank you for for wanting to like, give me a hug too because I'm here. The roomy back to like getting to hang out with you in person, and I'm getting like kind of teary eyed, thinking mm -hmm. like uh, getting to because. You know, I've been running these dinners for a while and most of the time the food's terrible and then you come and you like reset the standard and it it's like next level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well you're you're the best and thank you for being here today. I'm so excited. I mean I literally hold on, let me just turn up the volume to make sure we get enough volume going here. Um I'm just I'm so excited and congratulations because thank you. Book officially came out today and i and before we dive into because people have been listening to me talking of talking about you for like 15, 10 15 minutes now but i want you to introduce yourself um to this community of like oh, we were 800 people here um oh. which is amazing hi everybody so yeah uh, um uh, let's just let everyone know where we can find this i told them amazon but i'm assuming it's Barnes and Nobles, amazon your local bookshop uh your library maybe i don't i don't even know uh, Kindle, you can find it, ebooks and audiobooks. It's everywhere. It's done by HarperCollins. Uh, and I recommend buying it in groups of 12 so you can give them to friends. Uh, yes. And also, so that's, that's, that's brilliant. And you guys, I'm doing the same thing. I did, I did it for a couple of friends. When I knew a book is just, I call your book a Bible. So there are certain books that I tell my community, you need to have this book on your shelf somewhere because you're going to keep going back to it. And Typically, it's in like the health and wellness space, but I, I said the same thing about yours. I'm like, this is a this is a book that's going to be a Bible on your shelf, you know, and you're going to keep going back to it. So I'm kind of all over the place because I've already been talking about it. But John, please, if you could just from you know um, your own beautiful energy, just introduce yourself to these 800 plus people that we have, um, and give a little bit of background because a lot of people are like, what is a behavioral scientist? Okay, so I I have a fun way to do this. All right. Yeah. Um, so my name is John Levy. I'm a behavioral scientist. I'm super geeky. And uh, what I'm probably best known for is I got a whole lot of people to come to my home, cook me dinner, wash my dishes, clean my floors, and then thank me for it. Uh, <laughs> in a and the way it actually works is, and I just described it in a funny way, is 12 people are invited. They're not allowed to talk about what they do or even give their last name. They cook dinner together. And when they sit down to eat, they guess what everybody does. And they find out that it's a Nobel laureate and an Olympic medalist and an amazing uh, chef like Serena. And uh, it could be a business owner or a famous actor or celebrity. I've hosted over 2,000 people at 227 dinners in 10 cities in three countries. Wow. And what I realize in is really understanding what allows us to create extraordinary relationships. So that might be, how do you connect with your customers? Or that might be, hey, I wanna connect more deeply with 
potential business leaders or people I admire and respect. Uh, and I spend a lot of my time thinking about that. But if you want like a, a silly way to, to describe it, it's like this. Okay, I want you to look around the room, your room, uh, and look for everything that is green. All right, look around, go ahead. Also people at home, look around your rooms. Now, uh, so you're probably in your home, so this might not work as well. Close your eyes for a second and tell me where everything that's blue is. Oh. <laughs> exactly. now, that's, there's blue stuff around you. I can see it behind you, right? <laughs> But the, <laughs> this, yeah. So, but the fact is that we will only ever see what we tell our brain to look for. Most of what's going on around completely unseen. It's called inattentional blindness. Mm. And inattentional blindness is not a flaw of the human brain. Mm -hmm. It's a feature of it. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that if we had to pay attention to everything that was going on, if you constantly felt the clothing on your body, the temperature in the air, the uh, every piece of data around you, the book titles on your bookshelves, everything all at once, you'd go crazy, or you would need so much food that we would have gone extinct because we would just need that much energy to run our brains. Yeah. So instead, our brains have a bunch of shortcuts in them. And those mm. shortcuts let us survive. And one of those mm. things that we only notice the things we know to look for. But it also means that we're missing a lot of things that we think work, but don't. Mm. We're not seeing things that we could be doing that could make our lives easier or better mm. or successful. As a scientist, I do research to try to uncover those. Now, if you want a funny study I did, uh, yeah. I think you'll get such a kick out of this. Yeah. Right so I, uh, me and my, my research partner is a, like a well-known neuroscientist, much smarter than I am. And we did the largest study, I think it was the largest, in history on dating. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh -huh. We looked at 421 million potential matches. Between people on the million? 421 million potential matches. Wow. So 421 times two people looked at each other, right? Mm -hmm. And we asked, what would it actually cause you to start matching, right? Like, what are the things that affect it? And you know how they say opposites attract? Mm -hmm. Total lie. They do not attract at all. <laughs> Literally <laughs> across every characteristic we could think of. Uh-huh. Right? Oh my gosh. Religion, mm -hmm. uh, what does it, a educational background. If you both went to Ivy Leagues or liberal arts colleges, you were more likely to date. If you were both iPhone users, you were more likely to date. If you, mm -hmm. right, like, if your schools were in the same NCAA conference, you were more likely to date. Wow. Where did that ridiculous. even come from? Where did opposites attract even come from then? Just a so justification? I think there's two things. One is you probably dated somebody at some point who was very different. Mm -hmm. And in the first few weeks, it was like really exciting. You were exposed mm -hmm. to new things. And then by like the fourth week, you're like, I don't want to go to another concert <laughs> in like some dingy basement. It was cool the first time. I never want to do that again. Mm -hmm. And the novelty wears off. Right? <laughs> uh, the, the other thing is that it's easy to see the difference and forget the similarities. Yeah. So, like, you know, your heritage is different than mine, so you'd say, oh, look how different they are. But if we really look, both of us have dedicated our life to people. We've dedicated ourselves to putting out knowledge out there that can improve people's lives. Like, our similarities are way more common than our differences. Yeah, yeah. And you might say, oh, we're opposites, but the two of us are not opposites at all. Like, mm -hmm. the, so it's not surprising that we're friends. So here's the one, two things that I thought that were the funniest from that study. Uh -huh. One was, uh, if you had the same initials, you were 11.3% oh. more likely. Wow, really? Isn't that really funny? That is. I it, never even thought of that. Like, that, that's really interesting. It, the reason is called implicit egotism. Anything oh. that reminds us of ourselves. <laughs> uh -huh. It's why people named Dennis mm -hmm. are more likely to become dentists and live in debt. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Fascinating. Yeah, it's super funny. Mm. Uh, the other. That's really fascinating. There was one kind of thing where opposites sort of attracted. Uh -huh. And that I, I thought introverts would date introverts and extroverts. Mm -hmm extroverts. 
Uh -huh. But almost never date introverts because nobody starts the conversation. Mm. You know, that actually that really makes sense for me because I am probably, I'm more inclined probably to go out with somebody who will do more of the talking. Yeah. Because even though it seems like I'm an extrovert, I think I'm an ambivert. You know, like I'm more of an introvert. If I, if I need to, if I need to show up, I can be extroverted. Um, but I like when someone can do more of the talking and I learn and I can, can take that role between the two of us. If they're the more extroverted one. So it's definitely. Describing is really common, which is, mm -hmm. is when you're called to it, mm -hmm. you put it on and mm -hmm. you put it like everything. Mm -hmm. And then like once it's done and mm -hmm. that part is done, you're like, okay, I did my part. <laughs> now, now I recharge. I need my <laughs> yes, that is so me. That's exactly me. So, um, which may be surprising to some people, I think in my community there, I've talked about it a couple of times now. There might be some new people on. And, and for those of you who are joining us now at 111, so angel numbers 111, we have John Levion, whose book came out today. It's called You're Invited. And I'm super excited to dive in. John, actually, I just got back into town. I was with uh, Sarah and Craig in uh, Montana and a couple other people in Montana and uh, just got back into town to crack it open. I'm so excited. And you guys, John is not only just brilliant and one of the most beautiful, humble, heart, heartwarming souls that I have the privilege and honor of knowing. He's also kind of a genius. And he, he is a behavioral scientist. So for those of you who just heard the explanation of that, yay. For those of you who haven't, he's best known for his work in influence, human connection, um, he knows how to create community. And so it's a beautiful, it, and the way you do it, John, I, it, it's, it's beautiful. It's so natural. It's so authentic. It's so, it doesn't feel like networking in quotes, which is what some of the feedback came in. Some of the questions that came in is how is this not like networking, um, which is not comfortable for a lot of people and how to make that connection with others feel authentic and not networking like and salesy like um no i just made up words but you know what i mean i absolutely completely know what you mean uh mm -hmm. here's why like if you actually look at affecting anything we care about mm -hmm. it seems to come down to three factors it's who we're connected to mm -hmm. can't affect a person that we're not connected to right mm -hmm. but how much they trust us mm -hmm. uh, because if somebody doesn't trust you why would they listen to you and the third is the sense of belonging or community that you share. Yeah. If you share a profound level of connection across a group, it compounds the effects of the, the other two. And uh, so this idea that networking sucks is completely true, right? Yeah. In fact, uh, there's a funny study done by Harvard Business School uh, that found that our implicit association, right, like our subconscious relationship to stuff, mm -hmm. uh, to networking, is that we feel dirty. Mm, yeah. Right? We want to wash, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because it, it, it's not a natural way at all to meet a human being. It's like, okay, I'm going to walk into a room with a hundred other people. Mm -hmm. I'm, one or two of them have, um, have something that I need. And I'm going to talk to as many of them as quickly as possible in hopes of getting something I want for me. That's mm -hmm. not a healthy attitude to anything. Mm -hmm. Interesting is we don't have that same association to making friends, mm. right? And so we've forgotten that we don't actually want networking, which feels unnatural and cold, but we want our friendships. Yeah. And the generally formed friendships are, in, let's, let's put it into two categories. One is you meet somebody through another person, right? So mm -hmm. you, uh, Sarah and Craig at one of my dinners, yes. we've got, met more people since through them and because of that relationship of trust that you have with Sarah and Craig, you're willing to trust those other people, right? So that's called the halo effect. Mm -hmm. Are affected by that anytime we like somebody wears Jordan brand clothing, right? Like mm -hmm. it's not up any faster or higher or whatever it is. It's just that it has its logo, so we associate it as well. The second side of it is when you actually look at how human beings connect in general, 
it's around interests. So you have an interest in health, right? So you mm -hmm. might be more easily with other people in the health industry. Shared activities. Mm -hmm. So let's say you go for a run or you, you're part of a soccer team, you all play together and you feel closer to each other. Or a shared heritage or culture. So uh, if you go to your religious institution or something like that, you'll often connect with the people there. The problem is that we go to networking events which feel cold and we stand across from each other trying to interview each other rather than participating in an activity mm -hmm. so that we can actually connect. Mm -hmm. And activities as a species is how we relate it to one another. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. like, you're a hunter and gatherers. I'd say, Serena, we need food. Do you want to take a walk with me? Let's go get some berries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you'd be like, yeah, let's do it. And then we mm -hmm. could, we'd talk. Mm -hmm. well, did our thing. So that's the connection portion. What fascinates me is uh, is the trust side of things. Yeah. Because we have that equally backwards, right? Mm -hmm. that's a good example. So you're considered influential in your field. You probably get a ton of messages being like, hey, can we take you out to dinner to tell you about a product? Or, or they'll be like, we have a party with a swag bag. Will you come? Right? Or, now, yeah, can we send you your product? Can we come yeah. on your live? Like, you know, different things. Uh -huh. Now, let me ask you a question. If I just give you a bunch of stuff, what do you do with most of it? To be honest, like, it sits there. Yeah. I have boxes of things that I haven't even opened yet. Um, but I went to go open your book right away because it's one of the, because we have a connection. So I'm like, oh, I want to see John's book. But all the other things, and I'm still, I'm grateful for it being sent, but I don't have a connection to it. So they sit in a pile unopened. But that's, that's exactly the point. Mm -hmm. So here's what's interesting. It turns out that gifting doesn't tend to work really well. Mm -hmm. Know that it's something that already means a lot to you, right? Yeah. So if you're like a huge Harry Potter fan, I don't even know what, and I got you like a wand, you might be like, oh, John gets me, right? Mm -hmm. But aside from that, gifting doesn't tend to work. What does mm -hmm. very oddly is mm -hmm. the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. And it's called the Ikea effect. Oh, yes. Okay. Explain that. So the Ikea effect is that we disproportionately care about our Ikea furniture because we have to assemble it. Huh. So anything we put effort into, we care about disproportionately. Mm -hmm. Now watch, how did you and Sarah and Craig become friends? Through you. I, what, I was... hey, what happened? What did you do? Uh, we met and I, I heard her story it resonated with mine, with both our, our daddies having had cancer. And I reached, you know, I, I said, you know, let's, I wanted to see them. I, I wanted to connect with her more. Mm -hmm. So we exchanged numbers. Then she invited me to an event that I think they're having the next day. Maybe it was Mary. Yeah. Um, and then, and then from there, and it was just a constant, uh, and I put effort into it. So, but here's, oh, so good. I thought you two were actually at the same dinner. So we like, were. Yes, okay. yes, we were. And that's where I heard. Okay. Uh, that's how we realized we're both in the health and wellness space. Perfect. Okay. So when you were at the same dinner, mm -hmm. we were cooking together. No, we actually didn't. We didn't end up pairing oh, up. Didn't? No, because we went through like, I think five stations. Uh -huh. And I, she and I just didn't happen to be at, at the stations together. Oh, um, so it wasn't until reveal, like mm -hmm. at dinner. So in general, the reason that people end up bonding at my dinner, mm -hmm. very happy that you two did, it's, uh, yes, uh, just like, uh, is because when you cook together, you have a shared mm -hmm. appetite. And anytime you have a problem that's bigger than something one person can do by themselves, mm -hmm. then we both have to invest effort into it. And then we both care about that and each other more. Mm. Right? Which is why I think that let's say cooking together or taking a hike or uh, let's think doing volunteer work mm. actually cause us to get closer to one another. What yeah. about traveling? So traveling is even more like there's a, there's a funny thing that happens, right? Mm. Uh, so can you give me the scenario and I can speak to it? Like, okay. 
Yeah, so let's say, okay, so it's two scenarios that I find interesting. So let's say two people who are maybe dating, who, you know, it's, it, it, you, you may have like spent the night at each other's home, but you've never actually traveled together before. Mm -hmm. So curious about that scenario. And then also when you're with your friends, you know, friends that you, maybe you don't live together, you're not roommates, but you decided to take a trip together. Um, so those are the, the two scenarios I'm curious about in your so, research. What's interesting about um, when you travel is that it creates a unique context where it's you and everybody else. Mm. It has the potential to bond you faster, right? Mm. Because mm -hmm. there isn't that same option of, oh, okay, I'll catch her. I'm going to go. I love the visitor in the background. Mm. Is now? He's my co-host. <laughs> so great to meet you. He is. You want to say hi to the camera? He's like, nope, sleeping, Mom. So cute. Um, so what ends up happening is that the moment that you have a context of you and everybody else, mm -hmm. it kind of a bubble that allows you to bond more, right? Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. There's a bunch of other things that happen also when you travel or potential to travel, which is that you have a tendency to be willing to do things that are more outside of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you feel like you grow and you get, uh, and you have like a positive feedback loop. There's a, a behavioral quirk, I think this is so funny. It's called the misattribution of arousal. And don't go there. I'm not talking about that kind <laughs> of thing. Just mean that like you're in an excited state. <laughs> the, okay. The, the famous experiment of this had uh, men walk across either a regular bridge, like the Brooklyn Bridge in New York, mm -hmm. walk, and the other group walked across a high ropes bridge, which mm -hmm. is, right, it's high up there, your heart's mm -hmm. counting, get to the other side. And then there's, in both cases, there was an attractive woman on the far side that said, hey, if you have any more questions, feel free to contact us. We're happy to answer. Mm -hmm. The men who crossed the high ropes bridge asked her out more often than the ones that didn't that went huh. on this and the explanation was that they confused the way that they were feeling from the high ropes bridge that elevated heart rate and that excitement for the person mm. on an adventure when mm -hmm. you're having experiences then it's easy to associate it to the people that you're with a great opportunity for bonding huh okay and the more effort you end up putting into one another the more you'll end up caring mm. now, the reason that we do this, for example, at the dinners is uh, a funny thing about how trust actually gets built, right? So like, I get it. Okay, there's this Ikea effect. When I invest effort, I care more. But why? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think you exemplify this in a really beautiful way. Um, it, most people think that trust comes before vulnerability, but mm -hmm. actually the way it works is that if let's say we're walking down the street and I go, oh my God, Serena, I'm totally overwhelmed. In that moment, I put out a signal for vulnerability. Mm -hmm. right? And if you take it or you uh, ignore it, trust will be reduced. Mm -hmm. But if you acknowledge it and put out your own signal of vulnerability, mm -hmm. I've been so overwhelmed, work is crazy, Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what what I'm doing half the time. Mm -hmm. but then suddenly we both demonstrated that we can be vulnerable to the same level, and now mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. so I've seen videos where you just put your heart out there, and you're like, "This is what was going on in my life. People thought you know things were perfect, and we were struggling with this and that, and that's like a serious vulnerability." And then what happens is that when people respond and say, wow, you're so brave. That meant so much to me. It inspired me and let me share my story with others. It allows that loop to be completed and for trust to build between you and your community. Mm. Right? And yeah. That, that means something really interesting, especially now when we're feeling really isolated. Yeah. Because it means that, one, we really want to be on the lookout when somebody throws out a signal. Yeah. It might even need us. Yeah. And the second is that we can't always expect somebody else to put out the signal first. Yeah. 
And something I have to really compliment you on is that you put yourself out there. Like you share things that, you know, it's, it can be brutal at times. Like it's super tough. And you share them beautifully and honestly. And uh, it's pretty amazing. Thank you. You made me cry. Thank you for um, thank you for seeing me, and thank you for that acknowledgement. I'm I'm I receive it. I'm so grateful. You're amazing, Serena. Oh my God, I, I think you're amazing. I'm a, I'm like whoo. <laughs> you need no, her co really. to take over for a second. I know. Uh, give, help me. Give me a moment so I can I can gather myself. Um. Thank you so much for that, John. And 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 I, I you know and I'm I'm actually I'm, I'm glad I came on early so that I could really just gush about how amazing that you are. And I know that and people are staying on. Thank you guys. I want to acknowledge you guys, all eight hundred plus of you that have stayed on. And I know some people have jumped in and jumped off. And really, this is such a a beautiful space right now that we get a chance to to get to know John a little bit more, well, not me, but you guys, um, and to and to really dive in. And, and John, we haven't even really dived into your book yet. I and mean, we've just been sharing, it's just, this is just so beautiful. And I don't even want to, I don't want to like, this is such a beautiful flow, but I wanted to flow into your creation and, and, and your book and like why you're so passionate about it and just give people a little bit of, a, of some insight into what's in here. Um, because I think it's so important and your book couldn't be more timely. I mean, this is more important now I think, than ever as people are trying to navigate and figure out how to nurture their relationships, how to create community when they're still, you know, physically apart. So, um, so thank you. I love you. And I'm going to let you just share about your book right now as I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take okay. Over. So uh, here's what's kind of crazy. I, the book is called You're Invited, The Art and Science of Cultivating Influence. Yeah. And when I talk about influence, I really mean the ability to have an impact on our life, right? Mm -hmm. That's uh, our ability to impact people or outcomes. And uh, the fact is that when we look at what influence is made of, it's made out of who we're connected to, how much they trust us, and the sense of belonging that we share. Mm -hmm. Now, what concerns me about all this is that, uh, you know, I grew up a pretty lonely kid. I was a uh, super geek before being a geek was cool. Now everybody has a computer in their pocket. <laughs> growing up, I had like a comic book collection, thought Dungeons and Dragons and Star Wars, Star Wars was cool. And back then that was not a cool thing to think, mm -hmm. right? Uh, <laughs> and, and here's what's even crazier. I, my hunch is you probably haven't come across this. Uh, but in 1985, University of Chicago did a study, and mm -hmm. they found the average American had three close friends besides family. Mm -hmm. By 2004, they were down to just about two. Mm -hmm. So in less than a generation, Americans, like all Americans, on average, lost 50% of their close friends. <sighs> now, that's terrifying. Yeah. We like to blame technology and social media and all that kind of stuff. But the culprit is probably that it became more acceptable to move for work, career, right? Like college, all that kind of stuff. And so every time we move, we reset our social ties. Mm -hmm. And so what really scares me is, you know, eating healthy is important and all that kind of stuff. But it, the greatest predictor of living a long time isn't you know, meditating every day. It's actually number two, having close friends and social mm -hmm. time. And number one is being a part of a community. It's called social integration. Mm -hmm. And if we've lost half of our friends, and this was before the pandemic, this was before yeah. social or anything, then that means that we are lonelier than ever. Yeah. And one of the craziest examples of this, the biggest area of growth, I think, for like nightlife in Japan was single person karaoke booths. Really? Something like that. It was it's crazy, right? Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Like so that's pretty frightening. That mm -hmm. because when we're lonely we can't sleep well, we're more anxious, yeah. depressed, all these biological. Oh, yeah. Um 
So I, in 2008, 2009, got really curious uh, what actually causes us to connect and how much we have an effect on each other. Mm -hmm. And I came across a study by these two guys, Christakis and Fallon, and this one was shocking to me. Mm -hmm. You know people refer to it as the obesity epidemic, right? Mm -hmm. There's epidemics like COVID, which passes from person to person, and then there's epidemics like Alzheimer's. It's mm -hmm. a percentage of the population. To the best of our knowledge, if I shake somebody's hand who has Alzheimer's, I'm not getting Alzheimer's, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they were curious which kind of epidemic it is. And it turns out that if you have a friend who's obese, your chance is increased by 45%. Your mm -hmm. friend know them 20% increased chance. Wow. Their friends have a 5% increased chance. Wow. And this kind of stuff is true for happiness, marriage and divorce rates, smoking habits, voting habits. Everything passes through our Wow. So think about this. If you are isolated, mm -hmm. then there are limited points that actually influence you. Mm -hmm. So there I was, 29, overweight, heavily in debt from college, mm -hmm. and real career aspirations. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't, you know, I was reading every self-help book and, you know, that, that kind of stuff helps. It's really mm -hmm. important for college. But I realized that maybe instead of beating myself up for not waking up early in the morning to work out, I could just hang out with a bunch of athletes so that it becomes part of my experience, right? Mm -hmm. So that my habit is exercise. Maybe yeah. out with people like you, I'll eat healthy rather than yeah. beat myself up for eating like a Subway sandwich or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and so I started studying what engages the most influential people in our culture. And mm -hmm. I ended up finding out that there are very specific characteristics that trigger our brains. And if we can harness those in a good way, mm -hmm. then pay attention. And that's what led to the creation of the Influencers Dinner, which I described earlier as yeah. crazy dining experience. So that's kind of the origins of it. Mm. And over the past 12 years, I've uh, continued researching everything from how to engage globally influential people to industry leaders, so think uh, CEOs, CMOs, thought mm -hmm. leaders itself, or uh, cultural icons, right? Nobel laureates, Olympians, editors, mm -hmm. all the way to community influencers and how to impact our friends and family. Mm -hmm. The book you're invited is about how the fundamental element that defines the quality of our lives are the people we surround ourselves with. Mm -hmm. and the conversations that we have with them. And then what do we actually do about them? Yeah. We, here's what's amazing. We think, okay, I'm going to go out there. Most people try and network. We know that doesn't work. But we're gonna, I'm going to make a bunch of friends, right? I'm going to figure out how to make friends with people who I really admire and respect. That'll have a positive impact on my life. Mm -hmm. But you actually know what has a bigger impact is if they all know each other. Yeah. Absolutely. The, so if I just knew you and knew Craig and Sarah separate, that has a limited impact. But mm -hmm. the fact that we all know each other mm -hmm. means that all of you are closer to me. Mm -hmm. You're pulled in more, and thereby you have an even greater influence on me and me back on all of you. Yeah. So there begins to be a critical mass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then we can really have impact. So. Uh, and, you know, I, I dive into a whole bunch of kind of like funny, crazy stories and all that. Uh, but, I mean, tell me, is there something specific you'd like me to share? Is there yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I and I, you know, I haven't had, had a chance to dive in because I just got back, but I was going through it. And it looks like your book is kind of broken up into three parts, right? Mm -hmm. You've got the influence equation, um, the, the path. Home, yeah. and then apply it all in your life. And I would love for you to just kind of explain that a little bit. Like, what is the influence equation? Like, uh, what, is that, what does that mean? That's your first part of the book. So, so actually, I've, I've, I'll, I'll describe that. And then I have a really fun idea. Okay. And, and the idea is I'm going to explain a scenario about Disney World down in Orlando in a minute. Uh -huh. And if uh, anybody who's listening in, in the U.S., okay can guess the answer, I'll send them a book. Oh, okay? wow, I love that. That's 
Come to me because we sometimes do giveaways here, just like a surprise giveaway. And this is even better. So we usually do like a screenshot and post up. Forgot about mentioning it. But um, that's awesome. Let's do it, you guys. So here's the influence equation is kind of what we talked about, right? Our influence is who we're connected to times how much they trust us to the power of community. Mm -hmm. Hence, right? If we're not connected to somebody, we can't influence them. If we're, they don't trust us, they're not going to agree to be influenced. And uh, community has a compounding effect. Mm -hmm. so this is the equation, what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. So, And we can talk about what actually causes influential people to connect in a bit mm -hmm. if you want. Yes. And we can talk about, there's more secrets to trust that we can talk about that are awesome. Like there's all this amazing research about what actually causes trust. And, and I think people will love it. But, yes. But I'm going to give this, let's talk about this idea of the, okay? Okay. And it works like this. Okay. Have you ever been to Disney World? Yes. I was so little. I mean, years ago, as a kid. After COVID, we're going yeah. to. I know. Group trip back to Disney World. So, okay. Imagine uh, you drive up to Disney. Uh, you actually go into the parking lot. You ride up an escalator and you get to the ticket counter. And at the ticket counter, imagine you're like a whole group, like you have a big family with you, right? Kids, all that. And you buy your ticket. And then for some reason, there's a 23-minute monorail or boat ride to get to the Magic Kingdom, right? Okay. Like you're not at the park yet. You have to ride for 23 minutes, and then you can enter the Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. now, I want you to think about this. And mm -hmm. there's a uh, oh, viewer's. Try and figure this out. Why on earth, if Disney's goals are to be the happiest place on earth, mm -hmm. and be a successful business, would they prevent you from spending money for 23 minutes or enjoying the park? Because they could have just made the entrance to the park right by the ticket counter. Yeah. So why would they do that? If anybody in the U.S. can figure this out, I will send you a copy of my book. And I'm going to give them a, a few seconds uh, to think about that. And while they do... I'm going to describe another crazy thing about okay. trust. And here's the other crazy thing about trust that I love. And then we're going to answer that question. Uh, so it turns out that if when people say, oh, it's, you know, what's the most important thing in a relationship? People always say trust, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. great. What is it? Uh, what is it made out of? Okay. And they can't answer. And I couldn't answer either until I researched uh, the book. And it turns out trust is made of three things. Mm -hmm. Number one is competence, that you're capable mm -hmm. of if you say you're going to. Mm -hmm. So you're an incredible chef. Let's say one day something goes wrong when the recipes goes bad, somebody tastes it, and they're like, this isn't that great. Is our immediate thought, oh, so I can't trust Serena anymore? No. We think like, you know, somebody switched the salt for something else and it went bad, right? The salt and the sugar. And I don't think, oh, she's incompetent, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But let's say we found out somebody lied to us. Uh, we would begin to doubt everything they have said and everything yeah. they have Now, here's the, uh, the interesting thing. Let's say the two of us are walking down the street. Uh -huh. I say, hey, sir, I, I accidentally forgot something at a friend's house. Could we stop by? And you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, of course. And I say, cool. Then uh, when we walk in, 40 of your closest friends jump out and scream, surprise! Now, if that happens, right, mm -hmm. it would be really weird for you to turn to me and say, John, you just lied to me. <laughs> right? Like, that would be right. really and that's because we value benevolence, that mm. other people's best interests above honesty, mm -hmm. above competence. Mm. And okay. so it turns out that human beings have trust completely backwards. We try to win mm -hmm. money and mm -hmm. with pump, right? So they yeah. say, Oh, our computer servers are up 99.999% of the time. Yeah. But really, the way that we build trust is through shared effort, that IKEA, that 
and we need to lead with benevolence. Yeah. So, if I'm Serena, there's nothing more important to me than making sure that your materials, data, classes, everything is available for your customers whenever you need them. I'm mm -hmm. going to make sure the servers are up, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Those two things feel completely different, and as a byproduct, we trust different. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that crazy? Like we literally have connection backwards. We try to network rather than do things together. We have trust. Yeah. We try to win people over with money and we try to demonstrate confidence mm -hmm. when we have shared effort and, and uh, starting with benevolence. Okay, so now that we know how trust works, let's see if anybody has figured it out. Yeah, let's, let's scroll up. I think we have a few. Um, some people said repeat. I think some people missed it. Uh, okay. So the question was, Disney has the ticket counter. You buy your ticket, and then you have a 23-minute monorail or boat ride to get to the front entrance. Why would Disney make you wait 23 minutes to start spending again and to enjoy the park. Mm -hmm. If their goal is to be the happiest place on earth and to get every dollar out of your pocket. So let's give them another second. <laughs> I wish I was there too. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. We did, did you, were you able to read some of these or read some of these yeah. out loud? Yeah, go for it. Let's hear what people get done. Okay, so that way you can sit back and, and, and enjoy it. Let's see. Um, some people said because they spend money after the rides. Um, someone said build anticipation. Who cares if it's easy? You have to work for it, then it has value. To I make like you, that. Yeah, to make you impatient and more anxious. <laughs> I don't know. Is that what Disney World's trying to do? Um, uh Probably not. But. Disney World tram to drive influence with songs and characters, to have hope, anticipation, as someone else anticipation. Here's, I'll tell you this. My yeah. guess, I heard about this, that it was to build anticipation. And somebody was like, listen, if you haven't built anticipation in the month since you bought your flights and the car ride and the parking lot, like how much more anticipation can you have? You're going to blow up. Mm -hmm. This surprised me. The average American earns about $44,000 a year after taxes. Just about. Mm -hmm. Some places more, some places less. Mm -hmm. A five-day pass for a family is $1,200. Mm -hmm. So when mom and dad uh, pay for those tickets, they suddenly have a sudden hit of buyer choice. Mm -hmm. And Disney calculated that it takes about 23 minutes for them to get over. Wow. How did they figure that out? Wow. Really I mean, they're brilliant. The, yeah. That way, to the park, you're not angry at your kids. You're not. Mm. You're there ready to be happy. Right. Again. Now, here's what's interesting. That's not just for the benefit of Disney. Mm -hmm. You're dedicated that much of your income, flights, hotels, food, everything to be there. Mm -hmm. It's have great memories. Mm. It's not yeah. the to fight. And yeah. if you make a lot of money, right? Then I'm not in the park with a bunch of people yelling at their kids. Mm -hmm. So it makes everybody's experience better. Mm -hmm. In behavioral science, we sometimes call this the elephant, the rider, and the path. And mm -hmm. here's one. Mm -hmm. So imagine the human brain is an elephant with a rider. Mm -hmm. okay. We have our conscious part, very small part of our brain, our conscious part, and we're going to call that the rider. We have our mm -hmm. emotional biases and mechanics. We're going to call that the elephant. Much bigger, much stronger, right? Mm -hmm. Now, three in the morning, I will, my rider is really strong. It's been sleeping, it's rebooted, and it will guide my elephant to a healthy breakfast, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But by 6 p.m., my rider is so tired that if my elephant sees a chocolate bar on my counter, by 6.01, there is no chocolate bar on my counter. <laughs> right? uh -huh. And do you know what's really funny? Our human brains will justify it and explain it away. Right? Mm -hmm. 
type of workout tonight. Or, mm. oh, I need the sugar because I need to stay awake and focused or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Really kind of junky. And so what most companies say is, okay, I'm going to speak to your writer. You know, if you buy this product, it will save you 7% annually, blah, blah, blah. Right? That works for some people. Mm -hmm. They're smart. They speak to the elephant. They say, how good would it feel to do A, B, and C? Right? Mm. And we hope that because the elephant is larger and stronger, that if it appeals to our elephant, that's where it will go. But mm -hmm. then there's a third. And the third option is, if you design the journey or the path that that elephant needs to walk down, and it's rigid enough, then it can't wander and cause trouble. Mm -hmm. I can eat chocolate bars if there are no chocolate bars in the house. Mm -hmm. And the sure. people at if they follow the path, mm -hmm. right? By the time they get to the front doors of the Magic Kingdom, they're ready to enjoy themselves, regardless mm -hmm. of where they stand. So some people will get to enjoy a beautiful boat ride and just enjoy it. Some people mm -hmm. will allow wine. Mm -hmm. Some people will actually get some quality time with their kids and have mm -hmm. a conversation. But the path is designed to make sure that we get you where you need to be emotionally. Mm -hmm. And that means that most of us are once again doing things backwards. We, yeah. Okay. I want to connect with my customers. So I need an mm -hmm. advertiser. Okay. Mm -hmm. The advertiser to a product, I'll engage with them. Mm -hmm. And then if, hopefully they'll become some kind of member in my service or they'll use my toothpaste and subscribe, whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. But we actually need to do it backwards. We need to say, mm -hmm. I want people to feel. What yeah. do you want them to think? Yeah. Okay. That's the kind of membership I want. That's the kind of yeah. relationship I want to my people. Yeah. Then, okay, how do I need to engage with them in order to actually produce that kind of experience? Mm -hmm. Like the IKEA effects, they put in effort. Mm -hmm. Do I, the halo effect, people introducing each other. Do I need, you know, any one of these behavioral characteristics? And I say, great. What, what do I tell people so that they'll be interested in that kind of engagement? Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example of the influencer sport. I say, my goal is that the people who attend my dinner will years later answer an email from anyone who was there. They will feel yeah. like they're camp buddies. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. In order to do that, I have to create a really intimate experience. I mm -hmm. need to think where they invest effort into each other, mm -hmm. find about one another that nobody normally talks about. Mm -hmm. But we have to create a rule that you couldn't talk about with yeah. Right. Yeah. We and um, John, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I just realized we only have two minutes left oh, for the hour before. And I don't I'm, maybe Instagram might not kick us off, but I just wanted to put that as a disclaimer, just in case we do get cut off. Because sometimes it cuts us off at the hour and sometimes we get to go over a little bit. So so I'm so sorry to interrupt you at that moment. But I just wanted to make sure the people on here knew you might disappear in a minute <laughs> or we might be able to stay on. But I wanted to just say that. Um, when we have a minute left. <laughs> Got it. So I guess if if I, there's anything I can share to, uh, is two things. One is um, I would be honored and privileged if you copy of your invited. And, uh, and the fact is that, um, that more than anything, what I want is for people to connect and have relationships that really improve their lives. That uh, we could spread just our networks and our communities in a way that, that can do real good. And uh, and I'm honored that Serena, you brought me on here mm -hmm. to, to the people that care so much about you and uh, uh, listen to you to, to be part of this with you. So thank you. I'm so honored, truly, John. I mean, I wish like we could say, I don't, I mean, we could try and jump back and we'll maybe do it again, another follow, but this has been amazing. I just want to acknowledge there were some people on here that said that they had already ordered. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone who joined, who already said their order. I encourage you to order. I'm going to have this. This is on my Instagram, on my feed, and you'll know where to go and shop. And go to the bottom here where I have my pinned comment. Go follow John. And 
We're good to go. So thank you so much, John. I will see you later tonight. Yes. I love you. I, Congratulations. I, and I'll I, talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye.